Well, greetings internet. Uh, Acoustic Pants here. Got another game of Dota 2. And, uh, well, where'd he go? Come back here. I wanted to look at that fiery bird thing. Come here. There we go. This guy. Phoenix. Still haven't played with this guy. I should have a go. Uh, if you're wondering, I usually talk about the Bible and religion and theology <laughs> on this channel, but I also do it while playing video games or, or watching them. And the reason for that is because I just like both things and I don't really see the need to separate the two. And uh, if I'm ever boring to listen to, it, at least it's interesting to watch a game. Ooh, check out that courier. That's a cool courier. So I'll just let this run for a while and uh, talk a little bit more about my absolute favorite book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation. Uh, as far as as far as confusion goes for Christians and for critics of the Bible, uh, this book probably takes the cake. It makes it makes zero sense to most people, and for good reason. It it just doesn't make sense, and the reason is because it's it, it, this book uh, is is a genre which doesn't exist anymore. It existed for a few hundred years either side of the time of Jesus of Nazareth, and in the Roman Empire, or in the, in the Greek Empire to begin with, and then the Roman, and now kind of doesn't. Uh, originally in the Greek, this book was called the Apocalypse, which is just Greek for Revelation, so we call it Revelation today. Uh, <clears throat> if you've never read it, it kind of goes like this. If I just flick through my Bible and, and check the subheadings, oh, does it give me... Uh, no, this Bible doesn't give me subheadings. We'll use this one. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Whoa, what a team fight. Oh, I should be watching that. Wind Ranger's gonna die. Come back here. Nope, no one died. How could you? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh well. Cool, cool. Now, let's see. So, so if you've never read the book before, basically, it just goes like this. So, written by a guy called John, as far as we can tell, lived in Asia Minor, Turkey. Um, possibly, possibly around the turn of the first century. Probably a bit before. So, it starts off with um, a letter to seven churches in Asia Minor. And they're not really letters, they're just a few paragraphs of what this guy has to say to them. Churches like one in Ephesus, Smyrna, Thyatira, a bunch of other places. And then uh, a, he has a vision of worship in heaven with angels singing and lights flashing and candles maybe? Oh no, no, but pretty gems, it has gems. And then um, the Lamb or Jesus opens a scroll and there's a song sung about it and the scroll has seals on it and as you go through the book he opens the the first six seals and different things happen so there's a um... what happens when he breaks the first seal? or oh, when he breaks them, so these different spiritual events happen and statements are made and the horsemen appear uh, and then there's this thing about 144,000 are sealed from the tribes of Israel songs of praise in heaven and then the lamb or Jesus breaks the seventh seal Dyer's trumpets are blown um, tower has fallen. Uh, how do I describe it? how do you describe this thing in paraphrase? you don't, you have to read it but but angels fly around with altars and incense and uh, the, the, the earth catches on fire the trees burn uh, lots of fire in this book lots of fire and blood Things die, stars fall from heaven into the ocean. Let's see, more trumpets. I'm only up to chapter 9, there's 20 something chapters. Then there's, then there's two witnesses who prophesy against the evil of the world and then the world kills them because they don't like being judged. And then there's the woman and the dragon and the woman gives birth and the dragon tries to eat the child but God whisks the child and the mother away. Um. Then there's the beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth who rise up against Radiant's God's people. Uh, what else? 
the harvest of the earth where God takes the righteous from the wicked, the seven plagues of the earth, what else? Oh yes, the great prostitute, the mighty whore, whom the kings of the earth laid with, lay with her to gain their power and wealth, the fall of Babylon. Let's see what else. Songs of victory in heaven. Ah oh, yes, the thousand years in Revelation 20. Actually, this might have been the last video I did, Revelation 20. <laughs> Most of the videos on this channel are all about this book. I, I thought I'd try and talk about lots of theological topics and um, lots of patches of the Bible and lots of things. No, I just keep coming back to this book because I like it and I want to talk about it and I've got a lot to say about it. And then and there's the final judgment, the defeat of Satan, the new Jerusalem is, is formed or comes to earth, the return of Jesus, the restoration of humanity and the earth and the ultimate glorification of God. And that's basically the book. If you haven't read it, you should read it. It's really cool. But don't try to interpret it unless you happen to be, you know, a literary historian with a PhD, which I am not. I just read what these people have to say. So that's that's the book in a nutshell. And the funny thing with the Bible... Wow, check that out. Sorry, the funny thing about the Bible... I'll come back to that in a minute. Look, these guys, 20 points up to 5 at 17 minutes in. That's a slaughter. Jesus. Damn. Well, anyway, moving on. So, with the Bible, it's, I've noticed this funny thing that's happened. Like, today, those of us who access a Bible usually do so with the whole Bible. Like, we buy the whole thing, or we look at the whole thing. And it's really 66 books in one, written by a lot of different authors over hundreds of years, or thousands, really. And uh, But because it's it's a compilation of books, we, we kind of lump everything together and we start to interpret one book like all the others so there's poetry and history and letters and there's proverbs kind of like Aesop's fables I guess then there's creation stories and prophecy and in this book which is uh, what you would call apocalyptic so we think of it Christians might call it a prophecy in it and it, uh, yeah, like yeah it is but it's also another genre known as apocalyptic writing which doesn't exist anymore so this funny thing happens where we kind of interpret everything the same way and we apply the same view to most texts and you you can't you shouldn't do that i understand why we do it it's because we don't know any like most of us aren't trained in literary criticism i'm not uh we're not we don't know a lot of near eastern history or um we don't know much about these ancient religions either and wow 24 to 5. These, so the guy, the red guys on the minimap, red dots and red health bars, they're just getting hammered. 24 to 5. This game's practically over. I'm going to have to find another one. Could you not help them for a while, Magnus? Yes, dude. America, fuck yeah. Born to eat you says, is Sven level 1 alt like a DD? No idea what he means. Anyway. Hmm. Well, that's a thrashing. So, anyway, you just you just can't interpret each book the way you look at others, and that that makes common sense to to when I say that now. But it's it's hard not to when you don't know when you haven't had literary or historical training. So, for example, if I look at two books by uh, Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart, the How to Read the Bible books. You don't, I don't think you need a PhD to, to know God or to experience spiritual revelation. You do need a PhD to understand everything that's going on in this ancient book. Uh, now, I'm not a pro at this by any means. I don't pretend I am. I just like to talk about the work of people who are. So, for example, um, the basic, basic stuff about this particular genre. They've got it out here in point form. So, for example... Christian pro a Christian prophecy cast in apocalyptic style, already mentioned that, and imagery finally put in letter form, dealing primarily with tribulation or suffering, and salvation for God's people, and God's wrath or judgment on the Roman Empire. So a lot of people read this book, and they, they hear the word prophecy, or they see it written in there, and we think, this guy's trying to predict the future. Uh, <clears throat> and then, but then what happens is we think, oh, this guy's 
this is meant to be a prediction of our future today, 2,000 years later. And I, I don't think it is. So, so a lot of scholars and a lot of students would be able to pick up that this book references a lot of themes uh, or a lot of, a lot of parallels to the Roman Empire and the Old Testament. I'll get to that in a minute. But it just wasn't written about our future. It was written, written by this guy, John, for his time back then, for, for his audience back then and not, not for us now. Damn. So this game should be done in under 25 minutes. Wow, that's quick for Dota 2, or Dota. Damn, alright, let's find another game. Let's see what's going on. Live games. Tournaments. Oh look, this one's new. Two minutes, three minutes in, let's watch that. So, and then the author, John, a lot of people would think he's the same guy who was Jesus' disciple in the Gospels. Uh, but reading closely, you'll notice they're quite, they're quite different. The, uh, and, and not even reading closely, like if you have access to the, to the manuscripts, like the stuff that archaeologists have dug up, you'll notice the styles of writing is really different. I, don't, I can't read ancient Greek and I've never seen these manuscripts, but like there's 66 books in the Bible, right? And they're all written fairly differently, different handwriting, different conjugation, conjugation, um, of the words in the text, um, often different, slightly different theology and different emphasis on different things. So the Gospel of John and the Revelation of John, uh, they have to be two very different Johns because their writing is completely different. Uh, and that's, and a lot of scholars would agree with that. In fact, in fact, I think there wouldn't be many who don't. Um, it's It's more just people who haven't really been able to, to really study in depth that wouldn't know. Um, let's see what else. Written about AD 95. Yep, around the time of the Roman Emperor Domitian. Uh, written to the Roman province of Asia. Or the churches in the Roman province of Asia. So that doesn't mean Asia today is in China, Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. It means um, the Roman province of Asia was pretty much Turkey. Maybe Turkey and Syria. Because east of Rome that whole thing, or east of Greece, that was Asia Minor to them. Uh, and in the start of the book where he writes a letter to the seven churches, you can, you know, you, you can identify those audiences from other sources. What else have you got to say about it? I suppose if you've read it, you'll notice it's full of, it's full of imagery. And the author, this John, had to have been really educated because there's, like I've done some of those other videos where I just go through, um, a chapter in this book Revelation and then and then go through the references to different parts of the Old Testament and so this guy must have known the Old Testament like the back of his hand would have had to have been a Jew or had a, a Pharisee as a mentor or just been extremely educated and bookwormish because uh, he knows the Old Testament really really well um, these guys in this book I'm referencing now how to read the Bible book by book they reckon there's um, 250-ish allusions to the Old Testament. I think really there's more than that, like a few hundred, over 400. Uh, but if you read through, you'll notice all the all the uh, imagery is there, like the beasts out of the sea, the prostitute, um, the tree of life, or the golden tree with its golden tubes, with the oil. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the moon turning red and a third of the stars falling out. All of that stuff is... Uh, is a kind of you should look at it like allegory oh that was a good snipe by Pudge or well, good grab but he's not going to get away with it oh is he oh gets the kill one for one damn and there's that bird again I should have a go with it a fiery phoenix bird oh scary uh, so so if you start off by looking at this book according to how it was written, it'll make a lot more sense. So, so if you see all the imagery as imagery, as, as an allegory or a metaphor, rather than trying to press it for details, and each section in this book is, there's about seven particular visions that John writes, and they're separate. 
Uh, and you know he moves to a new one when he says and then I saw in heaven or and then I saw and then I was taken in the spirit and then and then and then so when that happens that's a new section and you should treat it as such and so each section needs to be interpreted as a whole the book needs to be interpreted as a whole but with the visions that he writes about and the imagery uh, you don't want to press that sort of thing for details because that's where we get things wrong you want to understand the vision as a whole so for example a lot of people today look at the beast with the ten horns and they might liken that to either the European Union today or they might see it as um, different aspects of the United States Defense Department or different uh, uh, different departments in the Chinese government or provinces in China or something like that and they think it's going to unite and crush the rest of the world or whatever they're, but they're using details in this ancient book to um to re they're trying to relate these details to their current political situation or current cultural climate don't do that uh, take 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 it as a whole and try to understand the imagery and understand also that this guy says that these are the words of his prophecy and that statement there is a flag uh, where where is the verse he says it a couple of times and he says, in the words, in my words, or the words of this prophecy. I know he says it right at the end where he says, if anyone adds to the words of prophecy in this book or takes away, so on and so on. That, that phrase there is a flag that Old, that Old Testament prophets used in their thing. So straight away, this guy is making a parallel of his writing to Old Testament writings, right? Which is a big signal to people who know the Old Testament that they should interpret the image in light of the Old Testament, not in light of their current political, cultural, social world, right? So leave Europe and China and America out of it. It's got nothing to do with that. Look at what the Old Testament has to say. The best interpretation of Scripture is Scripture itself. Beastmaster, oh, he looks cool with his, with his little hoodie. Very cool. Bottom tower is under attack. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. I've already had lots of coffees this morning, so I've switched to hot chocolate. I quite enjoy having a um, hot beverage on my desk. So let's see what else. What else will we say about this thing? Uh, yeah, the words of prophecy, we've mentioned that. Oh yeah, the, back to the Roman thing. Uh, during, like Rome was pretty heavy handed against people who could be seen as dissidents. So anytime a religious group gained traction in the population, the authorities would get pretty worried, right? And they might try and stamp it out if there was any sign that this, that there was any anti-Roman sentiment at all. Uh, and this would happen to the Christians and the Jews from time to time. And that's, a lot of people think that's what brought about this book as a response to, to the emperor, probably Emperor Domitian. This guy, John, wrote this book um, and set and set the persecution of Christians against the backdrop of uh, against the backdrop of, of a war in heaven of a, some kind of spiritual conflict between you know Jesus and Satan angels and demons heaven and hell that kind of so that's kind of what the how you want to frame the book like there's all this persecution in the Roman Empire and it's kind of like the human subject for a spiritual truth uh, for a spiritual war that's going on in the background, which we don't really see. If you look at it that way, it's much more helpful to Christians, I think, than trying to like take each little event and trying to liken it to each country out there today and trying to say that uh, Obama is the Antichrist or Merkel is the Antichrist or Chairman Me or any political figure is any one figure in the book. Like, just avoid that whole thing. Anyway, I've labored that point. Uh, yeah, lots of links to the Old Testament. It's important to see a lot of the imagery as as fantasy, but not in that not in that the author is trying to make up something which he doesn't believe is real, but that it's a metaphor. I've already said that as well. I don't need to say that again. Oh, the other thing which slipped my attention many times is is the difference between uh, when when John when the author interprets his own visions and when he just states what happens. So he interprets things like when he sees Jesus or when he sees an image, he'll, tell, he'll say the lamb is Jesus or this is this. 
when he does that, that's really important because that's like a baseline. And so everything else which goes uninterpreted, you want to look at it in terms of the things that he does interpret. Like like images of Jesus or Satan or the church, they're probably probably the main ones. Another good one to mention would be the beasts or like the mythical creatures in the book. So the dragon, the be particularly the beast out of the sea and the beast from the land. Uh, so with this kind of apocalyptic genre, and it's not just Christians who wrote it, um, this is the only book in the New Testament that's apocalyptic. There's an, a, the second half of the book of Daniel in the Old Testament is apocalyptic. But people of other religions or even sometimes no specific religion would write in this style. And beasts are usually, they're not people and they're not images and they're not even countries. They're more political groups, usually governments. Uh, so the beasts from the land and the beasts from the sea, if you... Uh, I don't remember. But if you live in in Turkey, the, the beast from the sea would be the political force that came over the Mediterranean Sea to you, which would be the Roman Navy or the Romans. Um, the beast out of the land could be... Which is, I guess it depends on whose commentary you read, but it could be the Parthians. It could be um, the Seleucians, as in like where Syria was, or maybe even uh, not the Egyptians. Um, but another army from over 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 land, or another country invading you from over land rather than sea. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So that's kind of the book. I I guess really, the trick with this and any ancient document, biblical or otherwise, is you just don't just don't try and make it fit to your standards and don't try and interpret it. Try to understand what the author was saying, and then understand what it meant to its earliest audiences, and then you can interpret it but there are Christians today who read this book and go well you know the European Union is the beast and the Antichrist is whatever communist dictator is currently most talked about on the news and a bunch of other things and it's it's just unfounded speculation uh, by people who aren't educated in, in literary criticism criticism literary criticism and they got and they don't know biblical history very well um, and that's I don't know, I guess I can't blame them. People try to make sense of the world any way they can, but it's it's not constructive, not helpful. Anyway, I've had fun making this video. I hope it helped you. And uh, if you liked it, please subscribe. And I, a guy called John, as far as we can tell, lived in Asia Minor, Turkey. Um, possibly, possibly around the turn of the first century. Probably a bit before. So it starts off with um, a letter to seven churches in Asia Minor. And they're not really letters, they're just a few paragraphs of what this guy has to say to them. Churches like one in Ephesus, Smyrna, Thyatira, a bunch of other places. And then uh, a, he has a vision of worship in heaven with angels singing and lights flashing and candles maybe? Oh no, no, but pretty gems. It has gems. And then. Um, the Lamb, or Jesus, opens a scroll and there's a song sung about it and the scroll has seals on it and as you go through the book he opens the the first six seals and different things happen so there's a um... what happens when he breaks the first seal? or when he breaks them, so these different spiritual events happen and statements are made and the horsemen appear uh, and then there's this thing about 144,000 are sealed from the tribes of Israel. Songs of praise in heaven. And then the Lamb, or Jesus, breaks the seventh seal. Dyer's Trumpets are blown. Um, tower has fallen. Uh, how do I describe it? How do you describe this thing in paraphrase? You don't. You have to read it. But, but angels fly around with altars and incense and... Uh, the, the, the earth catches on fire, the trees burn. Uh, my absolute favourite book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation. Uh, as far as... As far as confusion goes, for Christians and for critics of the Bible, uh, this book probably takes the cake. It makes... It makes zero sense to most people. And for good reason. It, it just doesn't make sense. And the reason is because it's... It, it, this book uh, is 
is a genre which doesn't exist anymore. It existed for a few hundred years either side of the time of Jesus of Nazareth and in the Roman Empire or in the in the Greek Empire to begin with and then the Roman and now kind of doesn't. Uh, originally in the Greek this book was called the Apocalypse which is just Greek for Revelation so we call it Revelation today. Uh, <clears throat> If you've never read it, it kind of goes like this. If I just flick through my Bible and and check the subheadings. Oh, does it give me? Uh, no, this Bible doesn't give me subheadings. We'll use this one. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, what a team fight. Oh, I should be watching that. Wind Range is gonna die. Come back here. Nope, no one died. How could you? Hmm. Oh well. Cool, cool. Now yeah, let's see. So, so if you've never read the book before, basically it just goes like this. So written by. Well, greetings, internet. Uh, acoustic pants here. Got another game of Dota 2. And uh, well, where to go? Come back here. I wanted to look at that fiery bird thing. Come here. There we go. This guy, Phoenix. Still haven't played with this guy. I should have a go. Uh, if you're wondering, I usually talk about the Bible and religion and theology on this channel, but I also do it while playing video games or, or watching them. And the reason for that is because I just like both things and I don't really see the need to separate the two. And uh, if I'm ever boring to listen to, it, at least it's interesting to watch a game. Ooh, check out that courier. That's a cool courier. So I'll just let this run for a while and uh, talk a little bit more about